present uh, of planning board members are Herman Lilia, uh, Tom Mikas, and uh, Jason Shaw absent are Hank Betts, uh, who notified the board that he was not going to be attending the meeting tonight, and also Terry Duffy, who may appear later, but we do have a quorum, and we are beyond the scheduled time. So we'll start on the agenda with the first item of business, which is public discussion. Is there any public discussion? All right. Uh, there being no public discussion. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand. Please come up and announce your name, et cetera. To Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Um, uh, when you had your uh, interview with the Board of Selectmen, um, you spoke of the transportation oriented development project, um, Cameron's Toad, um, as being something that was. Um, you were going to pursue, but it would be uh, perhaps years before anything came of it. Does that mean that you've put it off, or will it be coming forward for a vote, the zoning changes of the spring town meeting? Well, that's that's a discussion we're going to have later in the meeting, Toby. Okay. This meeting. I I'll see. I'll just talk about that and where we want to go, but I can't answer that right now. And I also was uh, disconcerted by your enthusiasm for the so-called walk shed district um you know i mean you're not unaware that you know anything that is uh, legit as an apartment can by right be sold as a condominium um chicken coops and garages are have a ready market as luxury condos um and um there are also of course you know possible airbnb rentals so the claim that any of this might produce needed housing for the town, whether or not it was affordable housing, uh, strikes me as you know far-fetched, bogus. Would you care to comment? Uh, not right now, no. Thank you. Any other public discussion? Okay, we'll move on to the next item of business, which is the approval of review and approval or changes to or comments on the uh, minutes <coughs> of the October 3, 2019 <coughs> meeting of the this board. I think everyone has a copy. I'm assuming everyone has had the opportunity to read the minutes. Uh, if there are any <coughs> deletions, changes, additions, now's the time to bring them up. Nothing here. Okay. I didn't attend. Oh, that's right. You went there. Yeah. <coughs> um, Leaving you with the decision about whether we can vote. Yeah, I don't think we can because we don't have we wouldn't have um, sufficient vote <coughs> at this point. I so attended a uh, <coughs> online session of the open meeting law. Yeah. <coughs> this question came up and they said <coughs> only need a majority because of people aren't voting on the process by which the minutes were produced, not on the actual <laughs> content. Say all that again. Yeah. I wish I could. have a drink of water first. <laughs> That's what started me coffee. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> I know it's the practice of other boards and committees <clears throat> not to do it unless there's a majority of people who were present at the meeting. Right. But at the open meeting law <clears throat> webinar, I understood them to say in answer to a question on this specific thing, that to vote on it, one need not have attended the meeting because the vote is on the process which has produced the minutes <coughs> rather than the actual content. I don't really understand what that means. The vote is on the process. That you, how the minutes were yeah. produced? You agree with the process by which these were brought forward, not necessarily the content. <coughs> not to be safe, you could postpone the approval until you do have a majority of who was present. I'm just <coughs> telling you. will show up. I mean, I. That sounds. It doesn't sound consistent with any minutes that I have ever been associated with. That you know, it's. It was it, a surprise it to is, me. Too. It is not the process. It is the content. Yeah, I don't <laughs> understand says. what they mean by the process. That's the. <laughs> That's I mean, where's. 
was it recorded and then transcribed properly? Or but how can you say that unless you were there to hear it? You know. So let's put it off. I'm I'm more comfortable doing that. That's fine. Yeah. <coughs> maybe you can get you a citation for future. Uh, okay. Future. Thanks for the sharing. The um, so we'll move to item three, which is old business. This is. Um, we never voted. We did have a public hearing. We closed the public hearing on the site plan review for major construction project plans and submittal checklist. We actually never voted to adopt that. And um, we did change, and I have a copy of it. The, um, the change was um, on the, uh, under the utilities detail plans. Under electrical details, we did have add a bullet point of exterior lighting, and it, it, it is in there. So um, what I would ask to do is to vote for approval of this checklist and for incorporation, because the checklist has to be incorporated into the existing rules and regulations. And the existing rules and regulations say that they're governing the subdivision of land in Rockport, Massachusetts, but actually this is for the site plan review for major construction projects. So I would ask that the motion encompass two things. One is approving the site plan review for major construction project and also incorporating this document into the rules and regulations uh, governing the subdivision of lands with changing the title to add also that it will include the site plan review checklist. So someone reading the rules and regulations won't think it's just for the subdivision. They'll know that it's also for the major construction project. So are you thinking when you say subdivision, a true, the creation of a true subdivision? Well, I'm just, Is what I'm just. Because that, that does contain both um, information on the creation of a true subdivision as well as reference to a and R's, does it not? Yeah, I'm just all I'm referring to uh, is the existing document. These yeah. are these are the only rules and regulations that the right. that the planning board has. So what we have now are these these site plan review for major construction projects, Added. which will be part of these rules yeah. and regulations. But the I but the title you. just says. But don't worry about it for now. But don't but worry about don't it. Don't worry about it. Just add it in because it also is a is a collection of more than one broad this is, uh, collection this is of just, um, But doesn't it contain reference to a and No, it really doesn't. In the front of it, isn't there? No, it's just, uh, you know, no, sub-definition, subdivision, area. preliminary, yeah. definitive. I don't see anything about it. But when you read subdivision, here. when you read about subdivisions, I think it talks about different kinds of subdivisions. And, the, you know, the, the term subdivision is confounding because it isn't just a true subdivision of land into house lots with the creation of a road. Well, uh, I don't really see that here, but I, I don't know if that's, the, I guess I'm not making myself clear. No, I is that. I, this, I, is, I, this has nothing to do with subdivision. This is site plan review. All I'm saying is that if we're going to incorporate the site plan review into the existing rules and regulations that we change the title so someone looking at this will know that, oh, it's for subdivision and it's also for site plan, these rules and regulations. That's all. I mean, that's, it's just a matter of changing I, I the you. title. I, I didn't bring mine with me. I, okay. Can I borrow them just a this? second? This? Yeah. yeah, sure, go ahead. Um,
Okay. I don't know what I don't know what confusion it'll cause. I mean, I'd, one one additional point would be that this has been in need of updating. Yeah. So at the time of updating, you can expand the expand the title at that point um, and reissue it as a new document. Um, but that's fine. I, it's it's not a big issue. If if that's where you're going to send people, then that's fine. Well, I'm going to you know supposedly they'll get a copy of the rules and regulations, and in that will be these site plan review for major construction project standards. So why don't we just uh, we we need a motion to approve the site plan uh, review standards for major construction projects and to incorporate them into the existing rules and regulations. How does that? Sound. That'll be fine. That's, does someone that want to make that motion? Motion made by Herman. Uh, second the motion. I second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. So we've approved these uh, major construction project site plan um, review standards for whenever we get a major construction project, whenever that may be. Um, okay, next item. Um, this is, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to look at this. This is under new business, uh, under the Certificate of Performance for Alpaca Court, uh, which I, I got a call and some correspondence with a lawyer representing, I think, the buyers of one of these lots. And apparently, um, the title company was concerned that the, um, the requirements for the Certificate of Performance were not complied with, meaning it needs to be a document that's uh, signed by the planning board, notarized, signatures are notarized, so it's certified. And we went back and forth a little bit, and we did pull out the April 17th, 2014 minutes, which have been attached to this certificate. And as you can see, item five on the minutes, it says basically that um, the board approved the, uh, just reading it quickly, um, Chris Truppiano appeared before the board and requested that the planning board certify that the project is completed to its satisfaction and inform Paul Orlando, building inspector, of the board's decision so that Mr. Orlando can issue a certi certificate of occupancy for each unit. It was then determined that the project was completed to the board's satisfaction, meaning this board, after which Mr. Smith made a motion that the board certify that the project is complete to its satisfaction. Mr. Egerton seconded the motion, all in favor. Mr. Baker will send a letter to Mr. Truppiano. That's where the problem occurred. It's really a technical problem because a motion to certify was not sufficient for the title company. They actually needed a certification signed by the majority of the board members as provided in the um, I think it's in the subdivision law. I looked up the section. So basically what we've done is prepared the certification, and since we only have to have it signed by a majority of the board members, had it signed by me, Herm, and uh, Hank, who's the vice chairman. Herm was on the board at the time. Was the, were you chairman at the time? No, you was on the board at the time. So that's what this is. It's basically just doing exactly what was done back in 2014, but in a, more formal format. So I'm just um, asked for a motion to approve the execution of the certificate of performance as provided to you and your packet. Anybody want to make that motion? I mean, I'll make the motion that we vote to approve the certification as now signed, um, which um, is requested by council for the buyer. The buyer. The lot. Yeah. Council of the buyer. Okay. So Herm has made a motion uh, to approve this sort of certificate of performance. Is there a second to the motion? Can I vote on this? Yeah, why not? Five years ago? Well, I wasn't on the board. Can you vote on it? Yeah, sure. I, all, all, this is, all this is doing, it's, it's, it's a very technical Certifying thing. that we did it. Oh. Yeah, certifying that you did it and you look at the minutes and it was done. It was In done. other words, we're approving the process, not the content. Exactly. That sounds familiar. Yeah, right. Well, this one, it makes sense. All right, I'll yeah. second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Tom seconded the motion just for the 
record. Harm, I don't know if you want to move your mic a little closer. I don't know how sensitive these things are. Dave, you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, next item. Um, Hank, uh, I think we talked about this at the last meeting, uh, had a woman who, who he ran into, I guess, at the climate change um, seminar who was interested, expressed interest in being in this our planner position. And so she uh, provided a resume, which I've attached. Um, her name is Susan Quaitman. And, her, and um, Hank and I met with her just informally at the planning board office but basically her, she didn't really add much beyond what's in her resume. Um, you know, we, we've just actually advertised for this position in a number of, of places. The good news is the way the business has been going in the planning board the last few months, we have very little business that requires review for a planner, right. of a planner. So, I mean, I guess that's lucky in a way. But in any event, here's her resume. Um, you know, I guess the question I want to ask everyone is whether looking at her um, qualifications, uh, which are three pages long, uh, unfortunately, most of them don't relate to mm. our job. Therein lies <laughs> the problem. Yeah, whether we want to proceed any further in discussions with her right now or we want to wait to see what we get from our ads. And um, I just I would to offer the same, essentially the same opinion. And as much as I think that the resume is very interesting, we should retain it and consider it at a future date. She has, if she had a history that had been developed around her master's degree in regional planning, that would be one thing, but um, it doesn't seem to be uh, very extensive in that regard. So I would say let's let's just hold on to it. Mom, um, you have any opinion? Any mm. different mm. opinion? You don't have you don't have to have an opinion. Well, as I said earlier, I I do know her from the yeah. organizing committee of the event that yeah. Hank met her, and uh, I don't know of any specific experience for being a town planner. Uh, I know she has some energy and expertise in uh, climate change, so any aspects of our planning relating to that might be a, a fit, but uh, we should see how she compares with others that might come in, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, she, she did, she acknowledged, and you know, rightfully so, that she doesn't have the kind of technical skills to be a planner. You know, right. She doesn't. She's certainly not familiar with the Rockport zoning code or zoning bylaws. She would be, she would have a very steep learning curve. She seems like a very intelligent woman, but as you can see from her resume, she just has not been focused on planning for the last few decades. So, anyway, I, I agree with Herm. That's, those are my sentiments exactly. Let's wait, you know, hold, put this on hold, wait and see what happens. And, uh, as I think I mentioned earlier, that um, Kirk Baker um, has expressed a willingness to get involved in things on kind of a peace basis. So right now, um, I think we could take make use of that. We're, we're really not very busy. Uh, so anyway, that's that's where we are with that. What okay. about the, the ad that went out? What was the basis for that? Was that a part-time or? Yeah, we're looking for 10 to 15 hours a week, uh, minimal, you know, coming to the town once a week to be available for people who have applications. Not necessarily attending a night meeting mm -hmm. because of the potential hardship that may cause someone for those, you know, they may be in a different town. So would that be a minimum of 10 hours and a maximum of well, 15 you know, hours? Or is it it's a work in can't process. It can't be 20. Right. It, it will not be 20. It will guaranteed. not be 20. We don't have enough business for someone no. to work 20. Right. In fact, sometimes I think Kirk was, you know, looking for business. Now, if we wanted to have the planner 
start to not just look at applications, but also look at you know potential revisions yes. of the the bylaws. That's a that's a different story because that could you know that could eat up a lot of hours. But you know we're right we now did we end up with anything. an additional I think seven thousand dollars in the budget. So I think there is a total of fifty thousand oh, dollars in the budget now. For this position. Oh, really? I check, thought it was like check 30 on, something. But, I, but whatever. It's kind well, of. A, we, the additional seven. Okay. Okay. I, I take it's, it's 57 an hour. So that was kind of, that's what the 57 comes from. Um, would go up, potentially go up because there was an additional 7,000 that had been added to it. But you're right. It's under, it's under 30,000 yeah. total. And we're not, right. as you can see from. In fact, it's right here. Yeah. You can see You it. can see it. You can we're, see it. Yeah. We're not, we're not anywhere near that. So. No. Okay. okay, well, we'll see what happens with that. Um, yeah. All right, moving on to item five, member items, uh, communication from Chris Cushel. Everyone has a copy of that. Uh, you know, Chris has uh, reached out a couple of times saying, hi, guys, what's going on? Are you doing any work on the TOD and the other uh, bylaw of the walk shed area? And you have his email here. Um, you know, I... I haven't responded to him. I thought I'd bring it up to see what. Well, we, we did discuss it in September. We did get additional comments. I did make additional changes in uh, the yeah, zoning did. bylaws. Um, I may have even passed them up, but said we wouldn't discuss them until now in October. So we could add it to the uh, next, um, well, we, the meeting in two weeks and, um, and discuss these uh, zoning bylaws um, at that point in time for TOD. Um, so yes, we are active, um, although we haven't done anything in recent weeks. And spring is still a consideration. So what what should I tell? Um, how should I respond to? Uh, Just send him a Chris. copy. I mean, I I can yeah. you know. Um, I'll pass it on to you. You can send okay. him, send him a copy um, of the current status. Um, he has, uh, although I have, I asked him for a word file, which I can manipulate myself. But um, there are some things that he can manipulate, especially with the diagrams and the. Well, structures. it's it's um, it seems like he's. Interested in still being involved? Yeah, right. uh, you know, it sounds like he's not well, really asking for any more money. He just like he no. wants to be involved. I think he's invested a fair amount of time into this, and he'd like to see something happen. It know? would look good on his resume if, in fact, well, sure. the project could be brought to some sort of completion. Right. Okay. Well, we'll put it down for the agenda item for next, for next meeting. Two weeks. I will respond to him. If you want to send me a copy of the latest, do that. I'll yeah. send it to him. Okay. Do it. Um. The uh, fiscal year, uh, the expenditure report just speaks for itself. You can see where we are. We're actually a pretty, um, looks like we're a pretty lean organization. We've got, uh, this is one of the things that I, we were just talking about, the $34,900 is, um, you know, that would be money that would be available to this fiscal year would be available to hire a um, planner, but we're not anywhere near that at this point. So yeah. this is, you know, take a look at it. If, if anybody, unless anybody has any comments on it, I'm just gonna move on to the next item. And um, that is a report on the selectmen meeting, because I did go to the meeting and we had a couple of, two discussions actually, Herm, one of them, I'll talk about this one I did mention the, you know, the TOD and, you know, kind of a very plain manila way. We've got the TOD, we've got the half mile walk shed, et cetera, et cetera. And what was brought up by one of the selectmen, I think it was Denise Donnelly, well, yes. you know, have you read the Kleinfelder report? And I said, yeah, I've read it. And she said, well, you know, the sewer capacity is a big issue. And based on that report, that if, you know, if the TOD were ever constructed, then there would be, based on what was already existent and already on the books for planning, there'd be no more further capacity. And she basically said, uh, she was the only one who really said something about this, was that if, um, you know, we really have to look at the sewer, 
situation first before we go forward with these, you know, something like the TOD. So that was the so, feedback I got. So okay. here's my response. My response is that the crushing issue that the town faces is school-aged children. If the town is interested in maintaining a high school, then the town has to attract more school-aged children. You can't attract school-aged children if you don't have residences. If you don't, in a sense, work towards um, moderately priced, inexpensively priced housing at, in some location in town, then the, any issue that comes up with regard to supporting the schools with additional funding seems to be ludicrous. So I see the sewer, um, the sewer limitations as being somewhat of a red herring. It definitely has to be dealt with. It definitely is a limitation. Is there any way that that limitation can be um, uh, made less, less of, a cumbers of an encumbrance? Because we have to do one or the other. We either, if we're going to be nothing but a retirement town and we're going to leave green as green and not develop anything further, that's a decision that needs to be made because the schools, on the other hand, cannot be cannot be financed, uh, cannot be f the student classrooms cannot be filled unless we have um, additional young children. So I see it as a big problem. I see, again, the sewer limitations as a bit of a red herring because it's always raised. Everyone, I've heard it several, several times over the years. And, um, and that's fine. It's a limitation, but it doesn't have to be an absolute limitation. I think we can work around it one way or another. Um, I'd like to hear how we would work around it, but uh, well, I mean, we, but that see, that that comes from a committee, you know, yes. and that's and that's where we where we sit down and we say, okay, um, outflow. Um, part of our limitation is outflow. Um, could we not have outflow on the south end of the town as well as outflow here um, out of the harbor? I mean, if you were to look at this critically, you would say the outflow that we currently have from the harbor isn't even in the right location. The outflow should be out further in Sandy Bay. It's just off the end of Bearskin Neck. Um, so there are lots of hidden aspects to this sewer limitation problem, but I don't see it as, a, as an absolute. Well, I don't, what I, I, to an extent, I agree with Herm on this. I think that the sewer issues don't necessarily preclude further development. I think mm. the sewer and, I mean, the TOD, if we have, if this got voted in tomorrow, it would be quite a long time before uh, anything would be built. And guess what? If it were going to be built, the capacity, the sewer capacity would be one of the issues that would have to be discussed. But it's not approved tomorrow, and it's going to be quite a while if it ever gets approved. And, you know, the two... The TOD and the sewer can be worked on <laughs> together. I mean, it's like you can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Well, you can. And, um, you know, part of the big issue with the sewer is infiltration. You know, and that's, that's something. It's certainly that's referenced. That's a big matter. There's so, a lot of work in any, in any event, I'm just reporting on yeah. what, no, you know, what was said. I understand. Okay, I just, I brought it up. And then the other thing that, was discussed. Um, I did bring up 51 Marmion Way, and I did, you know, we talked about council's opinion, which everyone has a copy of, uh, about 51 Marmion Way, because, you know, you're the selectmen. They're, they're the boss of the, the building inspector. You know, they're the ones who say, enforce this, don't enforce this, or, you know, litigation or no litigation. They're, they have the authority to do that. We don't. And um, there was a, um, you know, kind of a lukewarm response, I should say. Um, Sarah Wilkinson, there was one comment, and maybe there was more than one, but I remember this one. She said, well, has the owner of 51 Marmion Way been given a building permit for what was planned there? And sure. I said, yeah. She said, oh, really? 
So, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, okay? No, but it's... But I mean, it was kind of like, oh, well, they've already gotten a... I, it seemed to me she was saying, and, you know, she's not here to, to change this, but that if they already have a building permit for this construction, that the town, it didn't seem to me, the message I was getting was that the town is not interested in, you know, doing something over the, the decision of the building inspector on this project. I didn't get that sense. No one raised that issue. No one said, well, we've got, you know, we got an opinion from council. Um, so that's just the sense I got. The other thing, and I think, and, and I was actually waiting for you to, uh, you weren't at the last meeting, but uh, the, this section has good concepts, but it probably could be reworked uh, to be, you know, to have maybe more clarity. I don't know if that's something that you are interested in looking at, Herm, because I know you well, were the I, primary it, it, author two, of it. There were two aspects to it. I, clarity is always important. I'm not saying that um, additional clarity almost with regard to anything isn't a, a possibility. What I don't want to see is I don't want to bring something up to try to gain additional clarity, then see it go down to defeat. Um, what I want to see is I want to see the building inspector, um, I want to see that he has a, a feeling of obligation to uh, look at the bylaws and interpret the bylaws and not argue with us about the interpretation. If he has a difficulty with an interpretation, he should be coming to us or he should be going to town council. And, but he shouldn't be first operating um, independently um, as if he fully understands or appreciates the bylaws. When I spoke with him, his concern um, was, oh, that isn't the way I read the sum total of this. Uh, in other words, adding the residents to the accessory right. buildings. He, oh, that, that isn't the way I read that. That isn't the way that statement was. I said, yes, it does. It does say right. the total of. Um, so then he changed his argument and he said, oh, no, that might be a hindrance to somebody who had a 3,000 square foot house and suddenly they wanted to put on a garage and that was going to push them into the 4,000 square foot category and therefore the side, setback, um, side setbacks might not be in conformance. But we really have always thought that it isn't the existing side setbacks for the house that have to be changed, it's that the side setback for the garage would have to be in conformance. So that would have to be 20 feet, albeit the house was 15. So he created another reason to be in opposition to this, which I don't appreciate, um, because I think that he is obligated to try. When we had 69 Marmion Way here before us, 69 conformed. They understood that that garage had to be 20 feet away from the side, and it was. Right. Um, so therefore, what, what, what's going on? You know, um, can't we can't we, in a sense, encourage him <laughs> to to, in a sense, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> be um, to be a bit more um, restrictive? You know, in as yeah. much as that was the goal of the bylaw, um, and now the garage foundation is not in. I know. So here, so here we are in a today. situation where that should be, um, I believe, uh, 20 feet, a 20-foot side setback. Um, it can't be, because I'll tell you why. Because if if you've got the space there is so tight that if you move that garage an additional 10 feet toward the house, well, it's five feet anyway. But but well, it's 10 feet. It's right on the. It's 10 feet right now. It's right on the 10-foot setback, the garage. In other There's words, no garage. Well, where it will be on the plan. If you look at the plan, yeah. it's, it's and I, I discussed this with Paul. I went to the site. I looked at the plan. The, the garage, the edge of the garage, as proposed, it's not as built. As proposed, right. Right, is 10 feet from the property line. The garage also has to be 15 feet from the main dwelling. If you move, if you had to move that garage to make the 20 feet to, you know, from the property line, then the 15 foot spread from the garage to the main dwelling 
would now be infringed on. And I understand. So I, I, I guess same. what what Paul and I'm not look. We got an opinion from counsel. She said that she glommed on to the language that said the building under consideration. And that, it clarified it in one way, but made it uh, unclear in another. Because she said the building under consideration, and that could refer to new construction only. So you could have a situation where you have a, an existing house, um, and the existing house is under 4,000 square feet, but then you have a new garage that's proposed that puts the whole gross floor area over 4,000 square feet. Yeah. Well, but so, right. since you're only looking at the new garage, that according to the way council's written it, that you don't have the, it doesn't trigger the 20 foot setback. So. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I'm not I, saying I, that I, that's I, one of the areas that maybe could be cleared up. Well, it's possible, and, yeah. and I'm not saying no, but I'm not, I'm not sure that her interpretation is absolute either, because the the intent is to increase the distance between properties when houses get bigger. That's the intent. I understand. And, and, if, and it's and a good intent. The, and if there is a need to get a, um, uh, a special permit, um, not a variance, or but a variance, I'll say a special permit. I'm yeah. um, to bring the garage and the house closer together because the um, pushing the garage or, or creating a 20 foot side setback on the garage makes the garage and the house too close. Um, that may be that may be um, something that could be considered. My concern, my concern is the future. The future is that they've gone to the extreme with regard to the house. It's only 10. It's only a 10. Uh, 15 foot side setback for the house. And now they're going to uh, what? 10 You're foot talking side about 51 Marmion? 51 Marmion Way. It looks like a 15 foot side setback for the house. And then they're doing a 10 foot side setback for the garage. And they're supposed to be both 20. And then they're going to come along at a future point in time. They're going to say, you know what? We want to connect the garage and the house. And, well, that and, would then, be all a sudden, whole issue. and then all of a sudden, we have no control over the situation. And right now we have a bylaw in place that says yeah. it's supposed to be twenty and twenty. Well, look, I I hear so what you're I hear what you're saying, but I also have to say that I do read what council says when she says, you know, this this bylaw could be oh, and, made and, more clear. True. And and what I'm thinking is, if we work on it um, and make it more clear, then. There won't be any room for anybody to say, well, I, this is the way I interpret it, this is the way I interpret it, this is the way it is, and it's just it's something to think about. I mean, yeah, I'm frankly, I don't know how much, we don't have any control over the building inspector, and I didn't get the sense, maybe he'll, maybe he'll change his ways now that he's gotten the opinion from council, but I can tell you right now, I did not get any, any feeling from the selectmen that they... They wanted to really dig well, into this. Want, they don't want, you know, they don't want any friction with him. But from my point of view, and I think from the board's point of view, when we wrote it, was that we were trying to establish some side setbacks that would create, um, or, or in a sense, maintain greater space between properties as properties got larger. And that's what that's I, all I, about. I understand exactly what so, your intent was. So therefore, um, yeah. to allow that piece of property to be built as if the side setbacks don't apply, and then to work towards trying to um, revise this um, bylaw in some way, which is going to draw up a set of guidelines that will absolutely dictate that what we intend is in fact going to go forward in the future. Oh, it's like, and then for the moment, you know, we, we well, listen, will not it, be, he will not adhere to anything. No. If well, it's something to think about, okay? Spent. Sure. I, I leave it up, I, I'm leaving it up to you because I think, I believe you were the primary author of the original version. Uh, if you... We saw a problem, and right. the problem was created by houses that were built in Pigeon Cove, and we came up with a solution. Right. And it was, yes, I was the principal author of it, but um, it was 
a need. There was a gla there was a glaring need for something. Would you would you be interested in being the principal author of any possible revision? Oh, I'd certainly be interested in doing that. I'm, you know, if if we don't get into a situation of where um, somehow or other there's going to be an effort to try to reduce the effectiveness of it. I mean, we've got another bylaw on the books that just which is violated routinely, and that's this hedge um, along um, the ocean between the street and the water, and my goodness, it's violated all along Marmion Way, even it's violated even on Old Garden Road, where in fact a house was built, and we said to this individual, now you have to make, you got a four foot wall, you gotta maintain that hedge of four feet. It's just, nobody is interested in um, trying to it, and I can take you back to the um, original, description, the original concerns of the town fathers in 1951 with regard to maintaining view of the water. And I can show you all the evidence that um, says that their interest was in maintaining a or allowing no more than a four foot high hedge um, mm. along the roads, yeah. along the water. And yet um, he, the town, the, although he is charged with enforcing the bylaws, <laughs> That is, that's in the bylaws. Right. Um, it doesn't do it, and um, it, it makes the laughing stock. Is that is that in, that's in the zoning bylaw? The uh, hedge, the hedge thing. The hedge thing is in yeah. there, and, and okay. uh, his obligation to, look to for enforce. That. Um, all right. Well, I just brought it up. Yeah. It's something that uh, might you might want to take another look at. And with regard know. to fifty one, nobody's interested in doing anything. Nothing. About I would be highly surprised if anything happened with 51. 51 is actually the square footage is a, it's about 600 square feet over right. the 4,000 right. total. Right. So which of course Paul pointed out to me that it's only 600 square but feet. That's, that's, that's it. You know I mean that's where you, you either believe that that difference is important or you don't. He's just saying oh it doesn't. Well it listen doesn't we, we can be no. the biggest cheerleaders for this anywhere in the town, but if if we don't have a building inspector and we don't have a board of selectmen who want to well, do it something isn't, in it. Well, that I, I mean, I'm willing to go before the board of selectmen and say, listen, it, it, what, what do you want? In other words, this is what's happening to the town, and and this is what the, what the town father said in 1951. This was their intent. Now, Oh, times change. No, times don't necessarily change if, in fact, you want to try to have an environment in town that allows people to see the water as it always was. I think you'll get, I think you, there'll be support for that. I don't well, think, then, then that's know, where we go. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, Marmion Way is, no, not to disparage Marmion Way, but it's kind of exhibit, what's been happening there is kind Agreed. of Agreed. exhibit A for why you want this thing, because there, I just drove. Drove down it today, and it's just one house after another, and everyone's got a, you know, it's like East Hampton or something. And some of it is newly, newly planted. Newly planted. Oh yeah, not, oh, just, yeah. not just old growth. Oh no 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 no, 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 no absolutely. It, it's really yeah. Right, it's kind of the poster child, really. Well, right. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm willing to go before it. Yeah, well, like listen, you like, can, you're, you um, know, you know, this is this is not what was intended yeah. either initially or when we wrote this bylaw and it's not what's being well they and and i think what they may do is they i mean and you're certainly welcome to do that but they may say well listen our council has said this bylaw needs to be revised to be made more clear and that's what we're looking for and that's what they'll tell you so you know all right well let's uh, the the next item that i got this is kind of an unusual communication I got a letter from, dated March 27, 2019, from um, the uh, assistant fire chief, John Porter, which was received by the planning board on October 10th of 2019. So I don't know what happened wow. to it between, the, uh, between March and October, but it's regarding Hillside Road. And he says, to whom it may, and don't remember, this is, so, you know, 70 Pigeon Hill, 
the Rockport Fire Department has surveyed Hillside Road as requested by the planning board. Okay, so far so good, a few months late. We have found approximately the first 150 feet of the road acceptable. Of course, I don't know where that 150 starts and ends, but he says 150 feet. And when he says acceptable, I don't know what that means either. And then he goes on to say the second approximately 150 feet of the road starting at Keating up to the rear of 70 Pigeon Hill Street, we request that be equal to the width of the first and last sections of the roadway. So I'm not, it's not clear to me what he's talking about. Look at the drawing. Yeah. All other aspects of the roadway are acceptable. That's the letter. Uh, I, the reason you need to go take a look at it now because they have, in fact, um, expanded the width of it or added yeah. gravel to it. Um, and, and it isn't really even from Keating, if I'm not mistaken. The original letter, which was not from he but was from from Jim um, Doyle Doyle um, I don't know where this one made came. reference to Keating and um, but anyway uh, it would be worth taking a look at yeah. it again but um, we, we spent Tom and I spent quite a yeah. time there when when 90 Pigeon Hill was before this board and looking at that road um, and I you know I don't really have a clear recollection of it anymore but I guess the reason this is timely is because um, a property owner on the 70 Pigeon Hill is on, I guess it would be what, the east side of the road. Property owner on the west side of the road wants to create a lot. And the um, building inspector asked me, what did you do with 70 Pigeon Hill? And I told him what we did and pulled out the minutes. And then... Um, Hank wrote a note on this letter of his opinion, um, which anybody can read if they want. He's not here, but he wrote a note today about it. And um, so it's probably worth revisiting Pigeon Hill Road, at least. It's, it's I'm the sorry, Hillside Road. Hillside Road, just to, I wouldn't mind going back up there just to refresh my recollection, because it sounds like we're going to be seeing that road again. Well, it's, I just it's have going a feeling to be, we are. There was a know? lot that was sold. Five acres were sold um, and are going to be subdivided, I think, into two house lots. Yeah. Uh, and um, that's what this guy. And that will abut Hillside Road on the Steve Klatz. East side. Steve Klatz, does that ring a bell? It doesn't. No. Okay. I don't know who bought it. I know who yeah. sold it. That's all. Anyway. Um, but um, yes, I do know that that's going to come up. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, next item is administration. Approval of can bill. I can I add something uh, memorandum? under memorandum? Sure. Um, there is, as I think I mentioned a few weeks back, um, that a few individuals had more than one had come to me and were concerned about the conversion of commercial property to residential property uh, on Main Street in the downtown Bearskin section Neck, and also right? Bearskin Neck. Yeah. Um, and um, I'd like to uh, have a meeting. I'd like to have a forum where the homeowners, um, the commercial property owners, the tenants, um, the shopkeepers, that is, um, come and speak their piece with regard to possible zoning changes for downtown and Bearskin Neck along the lines of um, mixed remains mixed, commercial remains commercial, and commercial cannot be con converted to residential. Um, and, yeah. um, and see what, um, what the initial results happen to be from that kind of a discussion because if we don't do anything about it, as you uh, have probably seen, if you get down to Tuna Wharf, you'll see that there are several structures down there that have been converted to condos that used to be shops. And um, that is, um, I don't think, um, fares well for the town. The town has a certain character, excuse me, that is going to, um, if it continues, change the character of the town. And again, it's one of these things where if that's what the town wants, then the town has to be aware up front that that's what's going on. And if they don't like it, then we have to do something about well, it. Well, Herm, I think, what, and we've talked about this before, because I know you've brought this up before, mm -hmm. that if these, if there are people who have this concern, then, you know, that's why we have, we've got two public discussion periods. And 
you know, I'm sure Toby and Zenas would be happy to have company in terms of bringing things up. So those people should come to the meeting. Uh, you know, I know you, you but said I think I, think, you, I don't want to have a forum unless there's a reason to have a forum. But right I wanna, now, we haven't heard I want it. I want it to be bigger than just coming to um, this arena um, and to, in a sense, um, allow them to speak for a brief period of time. I want it to be a full discussion of what, in fact, is a major change for town. This is not minor. Yeah, but, but um, here's the problem. I mean, and, and I don't have a problem with that conceptually, but the problem I have right now is that whoever these people are, and there may be people out there that we're not aware of, they need to at least come here to advocate for just what you're advocating for. I mean, they, we, we need to hear from the property owners that this is an issue, and we haven't, and we need to. You know, they need well, to Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm... I mean, they can't just hide hide in the woods until... No, it isn't that form. they're hiding in the woods. They, no, we need to... Come, but, come to the meeting. That's but they're, we, but you know? they're, they're not... I believe that it requires, again, a bigger forum. They don't have... They don't see this as the bigger forum. In other words, well, this is... Okay. This is um, uh, not the place where the real estate agents are going to come and the... Uh, property owners are going to come, and the homeowners or whether the shopkeepers are going to come, um, unless we make it more than simply a discussion prior to our meeting or a discussion at the end of the meeting. It has to be well. Look, a public if, if somebody, if somebody, real estate property owner comes here and says, "Listen," or two people or three people come here and say, "We we want to have a, a this is a big issue, and we need to have a discussion." not necessarily at the planning board meeting, but at a special meeting or something. That's one thing. But so far, we haven't heard from anybody, not one person. So if, if it's such an issue, um, it's an issue. If they you, need to come. If here. you go, if you walk on Main Street and you see what's going on at the old Granite Savings Bank, and if you go down to Tuna Wharf, then you will see exactly what is bothering them. And, and yes, I can ask them to come. Yeah, and for I think this, you should. But I mean, but the fact remains is that the the need is there. Whether and and a forum is required more than just this. So if I get some of those people to come and express those opinions, um, that's fine. But then I'm hoping that the next step on on the part of the board is to have this forum. Right. Well, it may be. It just. No, what I mean is, we it just need to hear what they have to say. Right, but it isn't, right now it's only from you. True, but it isn't just a maybe <laughs> issue. I I do um, I do rub elbows with people all across this town. Yeah, and if you in okay. fact you know, so do I. Well, you do maybe you different don't. people. That's right, different people. So therefore, yeah. I am I am expressing a point of view which has been expressed by significant individuals in town. Um, so therefore, the question then becomes. We need to go the step further. If, in fact, the only way to con to convince you that these people exist is to have them come, yeah, then like I'll to, have them. But sure. I mean, I, I I take offense at that a little bit. But anyway, the fact remains is that yes, I'll ask two or three of them to come, um, and to express their opinion with regard to this need. But um, we do need to to act on the potential of a zoning change. Bring it before the town and see whether or not the town will buy into it because the character of the town. Well, don't, don't take offense at it. What I would like to hear is, you know, it's like the game of operator we all played when we were kids. No, I'd, like to hear, I'd like to hear no, directly. No, don't even do that. No, I'd like no, to hear directly I, but from well, the people. I'll ask, them, sure, I'll ask yeah. them to come. Yeah, I mean, that's the point. But, but, but don't, Put it on but the don't, agenda. But don't. Okay. Don't dismiss had, enough uh, said for now. Well, we have had another expression that's just along that exact line from the Economic Development Committee. They had actually approached the Zoning Board of Appeals thinking yeah. that they were the leverage for changing the zoning to help with this situation. And then I think, Herm, you and I both attended one of their meetings separately and heard what their concern was. So there's another town committee with this well, interest. You know, that's, that's great. But, you know, we are, we don't have a lot of business. We welcome, we are regularly scheduled meetings. Everyone knows where we meet, when we meet. They have the opportunity to come here and talk to us just like they can talk to the selectmen or anybody else about issues like this. So 
come on, come on down. As he but used then, to say. but then we can't limit them to three minutes. Well, we might limit them to three minutes now, but if, if it looks like, hey, there's a big issue here, then I would agree with you. There may be a pro it may be appropriate to have a, a, a wider. So it's not public discussion. discussion. It'll be agenda, an agenda item. Well, I object. let's see what we have. No, I, I want it as an agenda item. Well, I know you do, but right now I don't <coughs> think what's that's. What's wrong with having I don't it as that, an agenda? Because I don't think that's appropriate. Then they yet. won't come. Yet they won't come. Well, then fine. Then they don't come. No, I mean, you that's, know, it's like, that's not. Then I'll have my own meeting if that be the case. You can have your own meeting. Okay, then I really, will. Really, if you want. I mean, that's that's what you want to do. Well, I mean, it's it's one of these things where it should be an agenda item if you want them to come. I I still. Why wouldn't I, I you wanna, like it? I don't want to belabor this because I think we've talked about it enough. But no, we, we haven't talked about it. Enough. Uh, I think why we have. why don't why don't you want it to be an agenda item? Because there's nothing there. I haven't heard from one member of the public. Realtor, realtor, landlord, tenant, anybody who said that there's a problem with the zoning. I've heard it from you that there are unidentified people out there who think there's a problem and they want to have a public forum to address it. The answer to that is not yet. And if they can't bring themselves here to come to a meeting and talk for a few minutes about their concerns, then I'm not interested in having a public forum. And I think the rest of the board will back me up on that. Why do you, you know, say that? Because we'll have a vote. I mean, you want to have a vote on it. There, I, I there's mean, one person here. There's another person here. Yeah, we're I missing, know, I, we're missing point, two members the of the board. Is that right. here's, here's an issue that should be identified, has been identified, and these people should be given the courtesy of having it as an agenda item if, in fact, we care about it. I think that... You, I, think you're, I guess you're not hearing what I'm saying, Herm. No, I'm, I'm saying that... Let's have them at least come to a meeting to express their concern. And if it's a big enough item that it looks like we, they, it needs further consideration on more than your public discussion forum, then we'll talk about making it an agenda item. But right now, you haven't given anybody anything. And it's just like it, we're not there. That's all. Okay? No, it's not. So let's... let's uh, administration approval of bills. Uh, one, one other yeah. item that I had <clears throat> mentioned at maybe before the beginning of the meeting. <clears throat> Just learned this afternoon that uh, Ed Hand has submitted his resignation right. as MAPC representative, submitted to the selectmen. So I know we're not in a position to make a recommendation now, but just to let it be known the position is open and I guess someone can express interest in it or however you want yeah, to do it. How that. would we um, let does that person have to be a member of the planning board? Well, not recently, because Ed's been doing it after being off the board, and that yeah. seemed to work for the selectmen. I don't know. Maybe it just never came up. So how do you think we would... Ideally, um, it should be somebody from... Yeah, well, that would be the best thing. Yeah. But like you said, like for yourself, for example, you'd be interested, but you don't really have the time yeah. to do this. So, you know, obviously, if someone on the planning board wants to do it, I think the job is theirs. Yeah. But if no one on the planning board wants to do it, how, do, how, does, how does the word get out? Well, put it on the agenda for the next meeting okay. and see if someone has got some ideas or interest. Rep, okay. Is he resigning now or? He didn't say when it was effective. I assumed it was pretty soon, if not immediate. Okay. Okay, uh, approval of bills. We have one bill for... Uh, $477 for advertising uh, that was placed by the town administrator in the Gloucester Times and the Salem paper. This is for ads uh, relating to our planner position. And so we need to have a motion to approve the payment of the $477 bill uh, submitted by the, what is it, the company is the uh, North of Boston. North of Boston Media, thank you. Anyone want to make that motion? I will move the to motion. approve the bill as described. Okay. Herm? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Motion made just for their steno. Uh, motions made by Tom seconded by Herm and unanimous for the board. Okay.
Public discussion. Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Uh, to pour gas on the flames, your little tiff over uh, whether you would change the zoning to uh, indulge certain people. Um, Herman Lilia wanted a, a meeting uh, as an agenda item. I seem to recall a great deal of effort went into your new rules, um, which prohibit people from speaking during the course of the meeting. So why would these people, if it were an agenda item, be privileged to talk during the course of the meeting when those of us who come faithfully are not? Well, it's not going to be an agenda item at this point. They can come to the meeting. Good. You didn't, uh, maybe you didn't hear I heard. Me. I yeah, heard. they can come to the meeting like anyone else and say that this is a matter of import and it, it's a broad community issue and it needs to be addressed in more than just a public discussion. Excellent. And, and they would be that's, If that's the case, then, and if what they say resonates and makes sense, then a agenda item will be entertained I'm, but I'm, not just because anybody whether they're on the board me included or anybody in the audience says this item should be an agenda item because these because somebody wants to speak isn't it's not enough to make I agree an I agree 110 okay. percent so but that's I'm where still, we are either you don't understand what I'm saying or, or maybe or, I don't uh, I'm saying if it is an agenda item you get to talk about it, you, the members of the board, whoever comes clamoring for whatever they want only gets to speak at it the three minutes at the beginning and the end, just like well, the rest Well, right now, you're, right now, right now, we're at anybody who comes and wants to speak about it has their three minutes just like everybody else. Good. And if, it, some, if, Good. if it's something that needs to go further, then we'll go further, but we don't, we don't know that. Good, good. Okay? Uh, if we've not totally wasted the three minutes, um, Herman Lilia spoke about hedges. Hedges are not included in any of the bylaws. The only place where hedges are included is the site plan review where it talks about minimizing in interference with views. That's not true. The well, walls anyway. are included in the bylaws and the state interprets walls and hedges in the same way. No, they're not in the bylaws. All right. Well, they either they are or they aren't. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. Z. Yeah, Z. Seppel on ninety-two Granite Street. Um, six or seven years ago, the Economic Development <coughs> Committee in this town convinced town meeting to appropriate some funds to have an economic study done and uh, Professor Bluestone of the Northeastern University came down, went to the uh, Rockport Inn and Suites and, and interviewed a number of business owners and as a result of that they came up with uh, a list of recommendations what the town needed to do to Further economic develop, further economic development, and there weren't very the recommendations that Bluestone came out with were very very slim, but one of them was that if Rockport was interested in pursuing and increasing its economic development, to get rid of the zoning that allows residential housing in business and commercial uses. That was one of the only two things that I can recall that had any real impact. So uh, you do have some outside independent so-called expert opinion on this, and it really would be worthwhile, I think, if this town ever would try to study something and try to get some facts and find out whether or not it makes a big difference to this town's future. If we do have business districts, or if we do just let them all go to condominiums. In line with that, five or six years ago, I gave this town uh, a detailed study of the Newport, Newport, Rhode Island harbor areas and an extensive study that they did down there, which, uh, which came forth with the fact that uh, business and waterfront uses contributed about 
three times as much tax revenue per acre as residential condominiums. That pile of papers is still in your other office there in the cabinet. But maybe sometime you can look at that stuff and then maybe when people come to you from the town that would just like to get something on an agenda, you might listen to them. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to rebut something. Um, I have the old edition of the bylaws about on page 25 of the bylaws that were published in you talking uh, about February 14 uh, and fences no fence shall exceed four feet in height above the ground on any lot line between the coastline and the nearest public way the definition of a fence under state guidelines includes walls berms a whole bit so yeah. there is a guideline four feet. well wait four feet. Hold, hold on are you saying the definition just for my clarification is in the bylaw or it's you got to look somewhere it's else the, it's in the state state regulations that a fence includes a berm, okay. a wall, um, a bushes, a hedge row, everything. Okay. Putting two and two together to make five, conflating no. two separate sets no. of... I'm well, not, look, I'm not. Okay. And, um, listen, and, um, there's and no point in having an argument true, about this. But Amy okay. sat here and said the same, that that is in fact existing. Okay. Um, to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Tom, seconded Herm, seconded? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned at uh, 840.